بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد. Okay, today's session is titled What Price Will You Get? So before you understand what this title, you know, what it means, I want to start with a simple scenario. The scenario is you are invited as a judge for a drama. There is a drama that is happening and you are you're invited as a judge. So the drama has got several roles, several characters. And there are four important characters in the drama. There's a rich guy. There's a character of a rich guy. There is a character of a politician. There is a character of a software engineer. Uh, sorry, there are five characters. There's a character of a software engineer. There's a character of a blind and there is a character of a homeless. So there are five characters. There are other characters, but these are some of the main characters. So you are a special invitee. You are a guest judge. You know, your job is to judge and give prizes to the directors. Uh, sorry, you give prizes to the actors, right? You are going to look at the drama and you will give prize. You will decide who is going to get the first prize, second prize and all that. So what will be your criteria to judge? You are the judge now. You are going to give prize. Right? The drama is done and they are saying, calling you, dear sir, dear madam, please come. And now you announce you know, whom you are going to give the prize. So you will use some criteria, right, to judge. So what will be the criteria? So will you look at, you know, this guy looked good. So I'll give him first prize. Huh? This guy is very tall. I'll give him second prize. And I mean, obviously, it will not be like that, right? So there will be some criteria. So what will be those criteria? Their performance. Performance. Okay, mashallah. Okay, acting skills. Mashallah. Okay, what else? Very good. Uh, performance. Uh, yes. Who, who acted uh, as per the role? Okay. Very good. Performance, acting skills, right? How well did they play the role? How realistic was their acting? Were they consistent in all the scenes they acted in? Correct? Right? It's very important. If, if an actor comes in 10 scenes and he's acting very well only in two scenes. I mean, you yeah, in two scenes he did great. But in eight scenes he did not do well. So you're not going to give him the first prize. So after all this, right, mashallah, you know, you're a very smart judge. Everybody here is a very, yeah, dialogue, delivery, emotion, acting, mashallah. Right? I, like I told you, you are, mashallah, very, very smart people. Alhamdulillah. Huh? So, you know, you use all this beautiful criteria, wonderful criteria, and you decide that you are going to give prizes to the character, the homeless character, the guy who played that homeless and the guy who played that blind, the blind man, right? Now you are announcing the prize. Okay, the first prize goes to the guy who played homeless, right? claps. The second prize goes to the guy who played the blind, claps. Now, two actors who acted in the drama, they don't, they don't like your decision. They are like challenging your decision. Who are those two? The rich, the guy who played the rich guy and the person who played the politician. They don't like your decision. They are coming to you and they are asking, why did you not select me? Why did you not give the prize to me? We also acted. The rich guy, the guy who played the rich role, he gives the argument. You should have given the prize to me. You know why? I was the best dressed guy in the entire drama. Did you see my dress? Did you actually see? Huh? Armani. I had an Armani suit. You know, you know the watch that I wore? It was Rolex. Do you know the glasses, the sunglasses I wore? It was Prada glasses. You know how much it cost? Huh? Right? In the entire drama, nobody had this. And you know, I was wearing this. You should have given it to me. Then the politician guy, the, the guy who played that politician role, he comes and he says, Dude, what about that guy? Did you see did you see me in the drama? You know, you see how many people were there, so many sidekicks. So many people, you know, whenever I came into a scene, there were like 20 people following me in the drama. Did you see that the homeless guy and the blind characters, they showed respect to me? Huh? The moment they you know, saw me, they were shivering, you know, so much of respect. I should have gotten the first prize. And, and, and interestingly, you don't see the software engineer. Typical to the software engineer role, he doesn't care, right? He just came, acted and he went, who cares whether who gets the prize and I don't care, right? Because software engineers are like that. They don't care whatever happens in the world. They live in their own bubble. They, 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 right? So they didn't care. That is why I didn't put the software engineer. He doesn't care. Now, these are the arguments that these two smart people, uh, they bring. The rich guy, the guy who acted in the rich role and the guy who acted in the politician role, they give these reasons. Now, obviously, you are the judge, right? So you are going to give a response to them. So you are not going to say, okay, now I change my mind now. I will give the prize to you, right? You are not going to do that. You are a mashallah smart people. So you have to give some response. So what will be your response to them? To the guy who acted as a rich guy and the guy who acted as a politician? What, what will be your response? You will give some response, right? For their arguments. What will be your response? 
uh, this prize is not for just for your attire or your what is your look it is only only based on your uh, your acting huh. and the dialogue and the performance huh. not just like the attire oh it's for the performance it is for your acting it is for your dialogue delivery not because you wore this right not because you know you wear this watch not because 10 people came behind you it's not because you came in the scene and you walked out no it's for performance okay you'll give that now you might be wondering okay this guy said you know some quran class you know he's saying some drama something right i'll give you one more shock most of you might have seen this from shakespeare as you like it in his drama as you like it he writes this it's a very big uh, uh, i mean what do you call a stanza but now let's say take the first two lines all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players have you heard of it many of you might have it is a very famous thing might have heard of it right yes okay yes. now you see the inspiration for my drama example comes from this shakespeare's couplet from this now you might be wondering what has this got to do with the quran it has got lot to do with the quran shakespeare i don't know why he wrote this he might have written it for whatever reason right but there are lot of learnings in it that we can take alhamdulillah and i want you to remember the drama example very well because we are going to connect it okay so this guy shakespeare says we are all actors players is actor right in the old english players means actors we are all actors we perform different roles and the entire world is a stage whatever this happening here it's also a stage right i'm acting i'm playing a role here right and you are all playing a role here and that's all it is the life is all about playing roles we are just actors and actresses okay now we are coming to the ayat normally i ask you know which ayat are we going to discuss today i'm not going to because this is an ayat i can bet that most of you would not have thought about if there is anybody after i show the ayat if there is anybody who says that ah, yeah yeah i know this is the ayat you are going to talk about you can let me know and this is the ayat sorry this is the ayat surah ala imran last ayat in surah ala imran does anybody uh, think that this is the ayat that i am going to discuss today please raise your hands anybody see i told you you would not have expected okay alhamdulillah no problem right last ayat in surah ala imran so what does allah rabbul alamin say bismillah rahman rahim wa huwa alladhi ja'ala lakum khalaif al ardi wa rafa'a ba'dakum fawqa ba'din darajat liyabluwakum fi ma atakum inna rabbaka sari'ul iqab wa innahu laghafurur rahim but it is jilali by al imran it's not al imran so not al imran uh, al an'am sorry my bad yeah, yeah, yeah it's not al imran it's an'am sorry uh, slip of the tongue is uh, surah an'am sorry not al imran surah an'am surah 6 ayat last ayat 165 okay now whenever you read an ayat i will tell you a tip on how to uh, whenever you see an ayat or uh, read an ayat especially long ayat like this you have to ask right who is the or who or what is the main talking point in that ayat if you use a simple term for you to understand what is the hero of the ayat right some that every ayat is such a long ayat right they have some focal point allah rabb always you notice that so in this ayat what do you think is the focal point who is the hero of the ayat or what is the hero of the ayat anybody want to take a guess khalaif al ard okay yeah la khalaif al ard okay others any other thoughts other others please either you agree or disagree or say something na please don't say silent mankind mankind okay jaisa kal hai hmm and the elite class you know you know who are on the uh like who have been given better okay that's a focal point okay <laughs> those who receive forgiving and merciful from allah okay alhamdulillah okay so you know i mean to give you uh, <laughs> a different perspective there is no absolutely right or there is no absolutely wrong answer it depends on the perfect perspective judgment. yes right alhamdulillah so no it, it actually depends on the perspectives that you look at from each perspective you look at you will find a different focal point you will find a different hero in the ayat alhamdulillah all are good okay for our discussion today i'm going to look at it from a perspective where i am going to say the hero or the focal point of the ayat is allah rabbul alamin now you might be wondering how did i come with that look how the ayat starts how does the ayat start wa huwa alladhi and he is the one 
right? And for the Arabic people, you know, Arabic, you know, people who study Arabic, you know, the students of Arabic, is a straightforward answer. So this is the focal point because Allah starts with that and He gives an information, right? And you know the Arabic term. I don't want to complicate it yet. So you know, you get what I'm saying. So this is extremely important. So Allah Rabbul Alamin is the from a, from a perspective, is the focal point, is the hero of this ayat. And how does he introduce himself? This is, is exactly why, you know, we have to ask this question. What is the focal point? Because there is a learning that we can derive. And Allah Rabbul Alamin teaches us something about himself. Who is Allah? Allah says, he is the one, okay? He is the one. What? Five things Allah Rabbul Alamin says. He is the one who made us successors on earth. That is number one. He is the one who elevated our ranks over others. Number two. He is the one who is testing us with what he has given us. Number three. He is the one who is swift in punishment. Number four. And he is the one who is most forgiving and most merciful. Number five. There are five things that Allah mentions about himself. Very important. About himself. Okay. Next time when you think about Allah, we think about a lot of things. Right. This is one of the ways you should think about Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you think about Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, he has made me a successor on earth. He has elevated my rank over others in several ways. He is testing me with what he has given me. He is swift in punishment. And he is most forgiving and is most merciful. This is one of the ways we should understand about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is this clear so far? So far? Yes. Sir. With me? Yes. yes. Alhamdulillah. Okay. There are five things, right? In the five things, three things will lead to one of the two things. Now we are breaking down now. We are going one step further. You know, drill down. Top to bottom approach or top down approach, right? Five things. In the five things, three things will actually lead to one of the two things. What do I mean by that? First, he made successors on earth, right? He made us successors. Number two, he elevated our ranks. Number three, he's testing us. These, these three things. How you understand these three things? How you implement these three things in our lives? Will determine or will lead to one of the two things. Either we will receive swift punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. Or we will receive Extreme forgiveness and extreme mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. These three things, how I understand these three things, how I implement these three things in my life will determine what I'm going to get. So there is a cause, there is an outcome. Cause and effect. Three things are the causes to either of this swift in punishment or forgiving and mercy. Is this clear so far? Is this clear so far? Yes. So far Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, I know what outcome I need, right? And if I ask you, of the two, which one do you need? I mean, it's a no-brainer. Everybody will say, brother, come on. Right? It's a very dumb question. We all know. For me to get the desired outcome, I should focus on the, these three things, right? Successors, elevation in rank, test, these three things. That's exactly what we are going to do today. And that is how you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It all goes going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next time when you say, Ya Allah, this is what it is, right? What is the rishta? What is the relationship? He made me a successor. He has elevated me in rank. He's testing me. These three things, right? Now, keep this in mind. It is all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important. Number one, successors on earth. What does it mean? Khalaif al-ard. Khalifa, the word khalifa, the plural is khalaif. And khalifa is a very deep word. I'm going to take the direct and the simplest meaning. I'm repeating it. This is not the only meaning. I'm taking the direct and the simplest, simplistic meaning or the simplest meaning for that word khalifa or the khalaif, plural. How do we understand this? So I'm going to give you one example. So how many of you have ancestral houses? So when you go to your hometown, you know, this is my ancestral house, right? This is the house of my grandfather, great-great-grandfather. Huh? How many of you have it? Raise your hands, please. Okay. MashaAllah. A few of you had. Okay. Right. Awesome. Right. Whenever you remember, right, I, you, I'm sure that in your life you would have used this term ancestral house, ancestral property, right? All this, you know, many times in your life. Inshallah ta'ala, after this session, when you use the term ancestral property or when you think about the ancestral property, whenever you visit the ancestral property, the perspective should completely change. How? Remember, when you say ancestral property, what does it mean? Some point in time in the past, my grandfather lived there. Some point in time in the past, my grandmother lived there. Today, they are not there. The house is there. The land is there. 
the door is there the wall is there but they are not there subhanallah so we have succeeded who lived before us they came they lived they went today i am living i came i am living i will go 2023 came it went 2024 has come now it will go this is a huge lesson you take all the mahals all the palaces the mansions many people lived there today they are not there right so it is inherited by someone these people also will die and somebody else will inherit what is the learning here absolutely nothing is permanent this is very temporary so the house that i live in today will become ancestral house for my grandkids the house that you live in today the house that you want to construct the house that you want to buy will one day be inherited by your kids and your grandkids you will not be there so what is the learning here when allah subhanahu wa taala says khalaif al ard he is saying focus on the temporary nature of the life today aaj zinda hai ab kal nahi honge right as a famous share of uh, raha dindori goes right you all know that There's deep lesson in that right who is that right i aaj sahib hai masnad honge kal aaj sahib hai masnad hai kal nahi honge right if i remember the share right same thing right who is there today he's not going to be there tomorrow today i enjoy all this right my comforts the efforts you know the manner that i make to buy a house construct a house buy a car right for this for that right i run around break my back for what temporary very temporary extremely temporary and i'm going to leave all this and somebody else will come this is the first thing and allah subhanahu wa taala has created me has made me like this it's a temporary thing ye pehla hai this is the first learning when i think about allah subhanahu wa taala first thing that comes to my mind is okay he has made me as a guy who lives temporarily in this world this is not my permanent place allah did not create me and put me here so that you know i can live here forever no allah has got different plans so this is a temporary you know temporary station you go in the train you know the train stops in a station you go out you want to buy something right as soon as possible you will come back to the train yes or no you want to buy let's say you want to buy biscuits you buy the biscuit you will you know you keep looking at the train jaldi de jaldi de as soon as you take the biscuit you will not wander around you will not loiter around immediately you will rush back to the train because you know that this is not your destination your destination is somewhere same thing here my destination is something else it's janna your destination is something else it's janna so this is a, a temporary station you come here like how you get down to buy biscuits you come here to earn that janna your focus is there right you will not fall in love with that railway station right you will not fall in love with this dunya everything is captured in khalaif alar so far with me is it clear yes so sir far, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so this, and where is it all relating to it is all going back to introduction of allah subhanahu wa taala this is how i understand allah subhanahu wa taala when i think about allah subhanahu wa taala when i ask my dua i should remember that it is he who created me in this temporary world for a very short period of time right remember this number one number two what is the second point allah mentions of the three things what is the second point uh, he elevated the ranks of some over others no. alhamdulillah elevated the ranks of some over the others the moment we think about ranks right we will have different ideas let me tell you every person in this world every person no matter what is social status is even the homeless guy who doesn't even have a house who doesn't even have a clothes to wear is you know but naked even that guy is elevated in rank over some of the other people trust me everybody there is, you cannot find a single person not a single human being who will say i have nothing every human being i want you to understand this is extremely important every human being no matter what their condition is they are elevated in rank in one way or the other what do i mean by that look at health this is a rank not everybody is given the same amount of health some people are extremely healthy some people are always sick some people are they fall sick very rarely even if they fall sick they recover very quickly and this is all elevation in rank and you see that right upar niche hota hai a rank right not everybody the health if you take the health aspect not everybody is the same each you know we are here so many people if you just take health as a criterion we will all you know if you give marks we will all get different marks some will get 10 some will get 95 some will get 80 right 
elevation in ranks number 1 number 2 life span that homeless guy might be living for 70 years he has been given an elevation in rank in terms of life span there are several people who die in 20s there are several people who die in 30s 40s right people die in all ages some people are living a long life lambi umar so this is an elevation in rank then next is intelligence not everybody has got the same iq some are extremely smart alhamdulillah right so this is again elevation in rank family some people are very nice loving family caring family they love each other they carry each other you know if there is anything you know the entire family will come to help if there is anything sad the entire family will say will feel sad this is a loving family or all families like that there will be some family exactly the opposite oh you are horrible right always fighting always bickering always you know wishing ill for others there are families like that also right you see that right you see again elevation in ranks your beauty your appearance some are very handsome very beautiful very tall some are very short some are very fat some are very thin some are you know fair complexion some are dark complexion you see different elevation in ranks the power and influence when i say power don't think about the politician even if you are a masjid zimmedar you have power you have influence if you are a teacher you have power you have influence right in your office if you are a team leader your project manager you have power you have influence not everybody gets this power and influence and this power and influence again varies there is elevation and there is difference in ranks honor that you get right you go people respect you right people you know they think very highly of you this is again differing from person to person not everybody gets it the personality that you have some people are they say the cool as a cucumber very sweet guy he never gets angry right why because allah has made him like that other guy you know who very short tempered you will fly off the handle just like that different personality again you see that variation right the elevation in ranks one over the other the free time you have you have one kind of people who say i don't have time bye mujhe sone ke waqt nahi hai right i don't have time to sleep right and there are other people who say that bye i don't even know what to do so bored ah uh, is there any work i can do i'm so bored i want to do something right you see that different again elevation in ranks last last but not the least that everybody we all understand very easily is the wealth elevation in ranks and these are don't think these are the only 10 things these 10 things are some of the examples that you can think about so in the moment we think about ranks right we have a very narrow perspective a very narrow understanding we only think about a few things but all these things all are accommodated within the term darajat darajat uh, in arabic it's a nakira it can mean anything allah you know, didn't specify this it just said darajat which means it can be anything so all that you can think of you can put under it alhamdulillah and everything comes here and you look at all the 10 the 10 that i have given you can you argue that any human being in the world will not have one of this anybody the homeless guy anybody you take anybody even the guy who is in the coma will have one of this right because you know you would have had a very long life or you would have had a very good family right very good family that's why he is in coma somebody is paying to you know take care of him somewhere or the other right even the guy was a vegetable right who can't do anything even in one way or the other he is elevated in a rank over the other you look at it right so there is no human being who is an exception to this and allah rabbul alamin he is mentioning this to remind us so this is like i am telling allah is introducing himself so he is elevated in rank so the point here is of all the 10 that i have given here and there might be many more i am sure that each of us including me in one way or the other we have been elevated in rank over the others do you all agree in one way or the other either it can be in health or it can be in family it can be in wealth or whatever we are all right so when i look at allah subhanahu wa taala i am mean looking at allah subhanahu wa taala like that how much he has elevated me in ranks ha huh? that's that's something that we have to think about huh? how much has he elevated me in ranks you know has he given me more intelligence than others has he given me a loving family my spouse very very loving spouse beautiful children huh? i mean this is something that we have to think honor the kind of personality that i have if you are looking handsome and beautiful mashallah right good right You're tall you know people when i go on a very tall you know well built you know people you know say ah he is zabardast yaar look at the way you know this is mashallah this is elevation and rank that allah has given you so you know we should start thinking about allah subhanahu wa taala like that how much has he elevated in ranks right this is extremely important now i want you to put these two things together right which thing the first is the temporary nature of the life and the second thing is elevation in ranks then you come to the roles that we play and these two things they are interconnected and in the temporary world that we live in 
and in the ranks that Allah has given us, we play different roles. Some of them are, you might be a son and daughter. You play the role of a son or a daughter. You play the role of a mother or a father. You play the role of a brother or a sister. You play the role of a neighbor. You play the role of a community member. You play the role of a professional. Right? So these these things that you are, the, the elevation in ranks and the temporary nature, they all come together. They are intermixed. They are interconnected. So basically, if you want to define life, what is life? It's, I am playing different roles in different scenes. Now we go back to the drama. You see, right? That's why I started with the drama thing. What is the drama? The different characters come, they play different characters. Different people come, they play different characters. There are different scenes and they go off. Same thing here. Allah put me in the world. Very temporary in nature. Like the drama, drama will not run forever, right? It's for one hour, two hours, three hours, whatever that is. It's only for a limited period of time. Same way, I am being put in this world. I'm going to live for a limited period of time. 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 60 years. Only Allah knows. But very limited period of time. So Allah has put me here. Like the drama characters, I play different roles. Like they come in different scenes, I come in different scenes. Subhanallah. You think about it. Nothing different. Uh, what Shakespeare said, right? It is exactly what is happening. Now, what is the point here? Okay, brother. No, okay, all this is fine. So what's the point here? The point is, this drama that we are going through, this different roles that we play, this different scenes that we go through, the elevation in ranks, it is all a test. That is the whole point. In drama is not a test, right? They just came, they acted. But Alhamdulillah, there was some price that we spoke about, right? Similarly, we also have a price. So there is a test, right? The elevation in ranks is what we are given. And we play different roles in different scenes. So basically, how do you use what Allah gave you in the roles you play is the test. I want you to think about it. It's a temporary thing. And Allah has given me an elevation in ranks in several things. And I am playing different roles. I'm coming and going in different scenes. In the From the morning you take from Fajr, how many scenes have you gone through? I want you to think about it like that. You got up, right? You got up. The house, right? You got up, you know, you got ready. That's the first scene. You went out, you went to the masjid, second scene. You enter the masjid, third scene. You pray there, fourth scene. You come out, like several scenes. In every scene, you played a different role. Right, you played the role of a father, you played the role of a husband, you went out, you played in the masjid, you played the role of a musalli, right? You come out, right? Again, you play different role. You know, suddenly you saw the neighbor, right, and say, Hi, sir, how are you? Asalaam alaikum, whatever, right? You had that, right? You play the role of the neighbor there, right? That's a different scene, right? Different scenes from the morning. And you have gone through all these scenes and you have gone through the different roles. The question is, do we see these different roles and different scenes as a test. And every scene and every role that I played today from today morning, Fajr, I have knowingly or unknowingly used some of the ranks, elevated ranks that Allah has given me. Example, how many of you went to the masjid in a bike? How many of you went to the masjid in a bike? You know, right? You would have, I hope that you all prayed Fajr, Alhamdulillah. Brothers, am I audible? Yes, but you're audible. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you went to the masjid in a bike? Okay, few people are raising your hands. Alhamdulillah. Right. Is there an elevation in rank or no? Does everybody in India have a bike? Does everybody in India you know go to masjid in a bike? How many of them go by walking? Because they don't have anything. How many of them go by cycle? Right? Yes, bye. Are you able to see the screen? No, but it's the it's unshared now. Yeah, we are. It's back. Okay, it's back. Okay. So this is an elevation. It's an elevation in rank. In that role, in that scene that you played, you actually utilize the elevation rank that Allah gave you. I just gave an example. Similarly, in each and every role and each and every scene that we are in, one way or the other, we are using an elevation in rank that Allah has given me. But we don't look at life like that. But Allah is saying, this is how you should look at. This is what I have done to you. This is how you should know me. So this is extremely important. Now I want you to go back to the drama. Who is the judge in the drama? Who is the judge? Do you remember the drama example I gave? Yes. Who is, the, who is the judge? We you are, are the, the judge, judge, right? Yeah, you say I am the judge, right? The singular. I am the judge. Okay. Who is the judge in our case? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah rabbul alamin is the judge. Okay, right? In the drama, I asked you, how will you, what will be the criteria to judge? People said performance, how they act well, dialogue delivery, right? Mashallah. I told you, we are all smart people. 
The question is, Allah is a judge, and how will Allah judge? Huh? How will Allah judge? You tell me now. We are playing different roles, different scenes now. How will Allah judge? You tell me. How we did the performance as per our uh, whatever He gave us. Exactly. Right. How well did you play the roles? What efforts did you make to play the roles in the best manner? When I say roles, different roles. Father, if you're a lady, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, neighbor, community member, profession, everything is a role. Different scenes. In each scene, how did he act? I told you, right? Ten scenes, an actor comes, he acts only good in two scenes. Eight scenes, a flop. You will not give him the price. You want consistency, right? So are you consistent in all the roles? Am I making best efforts to be consistent in all the roles? As a father, right? As a son, as a neighbor, as a brother, as a cousin, as a community member, as a professional. Am I? Am I making that effort? Am I using the ranks, the elevated ranks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me to do justice to the roles that I'm playing, to do justice to the scene that I'm playing? Because all scenes are not same, right? Some scenes will require more emotion. Some scenes, you know, you have to underplay in some scenes. Same way in real life also, in our life also, it is not the same. Each situation is different. And each situation, the expectation is different. Am I doing that? This is extremely important. When there is a sad scene, somebody is laughing. Ah, will you call him a good actor? He might be, that might be the best laughter in the world. But you will call him stupid. Man, this is a sad scene. Yeah, you have to be, you know, you have to cry. Although it might be the best laughter in the world, but that is inappropriate. Right? Same way in life, right? I might be the best thing, but there is a situation that is demanding me to do something in the role that I am playing. The scene is such that I am facing. There is a role that I am expected to play and you don't do that or you do something opposite. Is that good performance? How do you expect Allah to judge? To appreciate you for being in that scene and doing not doing anything or doing something opposite. You see, right? This is how I understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Temporary nature, right? This is like a drama. Short period of time. Different ranks. Why different ranks? Because that's the role I play. Right? There are different roles that we play. And unless we have different ranks, we cannot play different roles. Everybody is equal. I mean, you imagine the world, everybody, same intelligence, same wealth, right? There'll be nothing. So different ranks is which actually what is creating different roles. There has to be one guy who is extremely smart. He's the one who will invent. That is the role of an inventor, right? There'll be other people who will need that, right? Their rank is different. They would need that. So they will consume that invention. They become consumers. So it has to be different. So Allah created these different ranks among us so that there are different roles that we can play. And we encounter different scenes. So far with me, is this clear? Is this yes, clear? Sir. Are you able to follow me? Right. You okay. see the you see the knot, right? Don't forget. Whom am I introducing here? I'm not talking about the world here. I'm not talking about the whom am I talking about? Whom am I talking about? Allah subhanahu It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are several ways you can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the ways that you can understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not my interpretation, not my understanding. This is what Allah is saying. He is the one. Basically, he is introducing himself. So the judge, my judge and your judge, is looking at me now. He is looking at you now. And is seeing how well I am playing the roles. How is my performance? How am I using the ranks that he has given me, the elevation and ranks that he has given me to do what he is expecting me to do? When you put a character, right, the drama artist, when he puts a character, he expects a performance, right? Else you'll be very unhappy. You'll say, the director will say, right, cut, 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 you know, what stupid acting is it? Come on, more expression, more dialogue, this, this, right? Same way, the judge, the judge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting, I gave you this, man. This is a scene. What are you doing? Example, there's oppression around. What are you doing? There's poverty around. What are you doing? The scene is there. You go out, you see poverty. You go out, you see oppression. That is the scene that you are seeing. What is the role that you are playing? You just walk ah, and you go. Nothing changes. You see poverty. You just walk and you just go. Nothing changes. Right? You see the point? What did you perform? What is your performance? So that brings us to the point. 
You remember those two characters who challenged your decision? Who are those two characters who challenged your decision? Rich man and politician. Rich man and politician, right? So what did they do? Basically, they came, right? They came and they challenged you. What did they actually do? What was their argument? What was their argument? Why did they say that you know they deserve the price? It was wearing the best costume. They called out what all they had done. What all they had done? No, what, what all is... they had. Well, what they were wearing, like the suit and the watch. They uh, didn't talk food. about what they did. They only spoke about what they had. Mm. Right? The point is, do we act like the rich and the politician? I want you to think about huh, the role, the scenes that you see. Do we act like that? How do, what do I mean by that? You say oppression and you just go in the bike. Nothing changes. No, not even a, a small discomfort in your heart. Right? Same thing, right? Like the rich guy said, you know, you know the watch that I have. Right? Same thing, right? The car that I have, the house that I have. Huh? You, know, the, you know the profession. You know what is my salary? You know, no, 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 no. You know what degree I have? Huh? All this. Like same thing as the rich guy. There is a scene there. You are expected to do something with the ranks that Allah gave you. The performance that you are supposed to make, nothing. You just pass through it. Poverty. You know, poverty, rande, kya, what, one, one, what to do? Allah created some people like that. If Allah want, na, by the way, there is one very powerful and very uh, threatening ayat in Surah Yasin. Hmm? Uh, Allah speaks about the disbelievers, how they will say when they are asked to uh, feed the poor people. Does anybody know that ayat? ayat I Mm, what is the ayat? Uh, ayat number I don't know by, but oh. I have read that ayat several times. Okay, somebody, you know, you, you know, uh, take that ayat out. Mm. Uh, okay, and I have to search it. Right, anyways, we'll you know, find it at the end, inshallah, and we'll discuss. Right, look at their argument, right? Uh, that's what they said, right? So similarly, the same thing, right? By the way, again, that's not only about, uh, you know, giving food. It's about everything. Ready? Yeah, the ayat is 47. Ayat number 47. Where Ida kila lahum anfiku mimma rasakukum mimma rasakukumullah. When when they are told, right, you know, why don't you spend from what Allah has given you? Call Allah Dina Kafuru. Those people who disbelieve, they will say, Lilla Dina Amanu to those people who believed. Anutu Aimu Malla Yesha Allah Wata Ama. Do you want me to we do you want us to feed whom Allah could have fed if you wanted? Subhanallah. Huh? You know, you are definitely people who are in clear error, right? Subhanallah. See, this is the argument. Right? If Allah wanted, no, you know, he would have given, right? Why should we? If Allah wanted, you know, he, he would have you know, removed the poverty. If Allah wanted, you know, he would not have put this uh, people in Palestine like this. Who cares? It's not my problem. Did I ask Israel to attack? No, it's not my problem. Right? Yeah, Allah is a protector. He should protect. He's not. Oh, what's my problem? Allah is the one who is, you know, who is the Razak. He's not giving risk to them. They are poor. Whose attitude is this? Whose attitude is this? Whose attitude is this, brothers and sisters? Non-believers. Absolutely. People who reject the Akhra. It is their attitude. Today, we don't speak like this. But do we act like this? Well, I am, I am, ask yourself. I have to ask myself. Of course, I won't say these words. But my, if I don't do anything... If I'm indifferent to what is happening, then basically this is what I'm I'm believing, right? Something is wrong, right? What is what is the performance, man? You see the scene there. That scene is, you know, there is a performance that Allah is expecting you for that scene. You are playing a you have to play a role there. You don't do the rich the rich guy, right? In the in the character, he just came wearing you know wearing the dress and the watch and the Prada glass and the politician came with all that you know halla bulla and he went. Same thing that we are doing, right? We just go through it, right? Go through the scene as like the rich guy. I wear nice dress, mashallah, you know, and I'm working this and that. I have this bike, I have this car, so many houses. My kids are here, my kids study there. They went to US, they went to UK, blah, 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 and all that. And you just go through it and you just passed away. This is the performance that we have. Right? So, so do we act like it? And, you know, you're getting my point, right? Do we act like that? Yes or no? You see my point? And it all goes down to how I understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment I say that, you know, okay, I'm calling upon Allah, I'm doing dua to Allah, I'm praising Allah. If my understanding is this, right, I will be seriously thinking, am I really praising Allah when I live like this? 
I don't perform in many a majority of the scenes. Uh, I don't perform at all. I have a role to play. I don't play. There is a sad scene. I'm supposed to cry. I don't do anything. I'm sitting there and watching. Something wrong. How will I praise? I mean, I mean, I'm just asking myself, right? Now, how do I praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala like this? There is a scene where I have to be angry. I don't. I'm just seeing, you know, I'm seeing the scene and like, and you know, I'm looking at it. Worst case, I may be even laughing, <laughs> you know, having fun with my family, right? How do I praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? How do I stand in the salah and say that, you know, I'm praising you? I don't know. Why I don't know? Something seriously wrong, huh? May Allah subhanahu wa taala rectify our affairs. Right now, I, I like this example, right? Mashallah, many of you are IT people. No offense meant, but uh, I'm being <laughs> from the same uh, IT field. I have a special uh, soft corner for these people. The software engineers, right? Mashallah, tabarakallah. Their greatest contribution to the society is inflation. So they don't do anything. They're very busy. They spend like you know uh, hours of donkeys in their uh, offices, working, working, working. They don't have time for anything. And mashallah, they have a lot of money. So then, if the, if the tomato is na two hundred rupees, also they don't care. They'll give tomato two hundred rupees and buy. So the inflation is very high because of them. That's the greatest contribution to the society, right? So this, right? We are going to take the software engineer character. Even in the drama example I gave you, they don't care. You know? They care who wins the prize, who care. You know? I came, I acted, and that's it, right? That's the attitude. If this software engineer, he is acting like the rich guy and the politician, right? The characters. What will his life look like? If he's acting like the rich guy and the politician guy in that character, what will his life look like in the real world? Right? He's going through uh, different scenes and he's playing different roles, but he's acting like the rich guy and the politician guy in the drama. So, what will his life look like? Is my question clear to everybody? Yes, uh, he will not play his role, brother. Like he will uh, be just doing. Uh... The basic uh, necessities of this life, he will not. What are they? What are they? I want you to tafsil de batayi ab. You know, explain. I don't care. Even if it takes ten minutes, it's okay. You know, it has to be very crystal clear to everybody. Ah, uh, go ahead. ATM machine. Matlab? Matlab, you know, basically, you know, in, in fact, the 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 richness he is he is uh, earning and all that, he's also even not able to enjoy his that also. He's like you know, no objective, no purpose, nothing. So okay, what does life look like, right? You are telling me you are giving me a comment on his life. No, I'm saying explain his life. In the morning, you will get up like that, right? Like you know how you are narrating. Uh, you know, it is same. Ah, uh, go ahead. Cyclic. You know. Yeah. You, you know, it's very easy. Ah. Uh. Go to office, do the same set kind of stuff. Hmm. Come back, very late, and hmm. and sleep. That is the, that's the you know nutshell of his life. No time for family. No time for you know children, society. Mm. Mm. Uh, no time to think around what is going mm. on. Mm. Around, you know, quite lost kind of personality in cyclic mode. Uh, not getting time for anything other than his coding and all <laughs> job. Okay. Yes, I agree, bhai. There is no time only. Uh, every all the like sixteen hours is going in the work only. So like I want to do, but I don't have time for that. Something like that. Exactly right. Somebody said very selfish, right? Where there is a scene where he has to be concerned. Will he be concerned? Right. Something no. is happening in Gaza, yeah. I mean, this this is a scene, right? I mean, when I say use the scene, I'm just using it because of the drama thing. So I'm not trying to uh, you know diminish the seriousness. Well, I know. Okay, it's a very serious thing. It's only for our understanding purpose. I'm using this term, so don't get me wrong. So there is a scene like the, what is happening in Gaza, right? You see, you really see in your eyes. It's not here. Say you are not reading. You are seeing today the videos, the disturbing videos. So that scene requires concern. When I say concern, I say ayo papa. Not, not that kind of concern. Real concern. So will this guy, software engineer, who is acting like the rich guy and the politician guy in the drama, will he have that real concern? No. No. If there is not even a concern, will he do anything about it? कुछ ना कुछ कर कर करने की कोशिश करता है क्या? ये थोड़ा कर करके देखेंगे. No, that will also concern itself is not there. Where on earth will he act? Nothing. You see, in India, the mahul, how badly it is changing in all ways. Do you think this guy will be bothered about? That's a scene, right? You see, every day you see a scene is happening. You go through that every day. Do you think this guy will be bothered? No, he will not be bothered. He is least concerned about it. 
If he's least concerned, will he do anything about it? No. So on the way to the office, he sees so many poor people, shandies. Right? Shanties you see, right? On the road. Every signal you will see a kid coming and begging. Forget about doing anything. At For a moment, will he stop and think, Subhanallah, if I had been that kid, elevation in ranks, my dear brothers and sisters, elevation in ranks. Next time when you stop and the signal, somebody, a kid comes and begs you, elevation, think about that. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, that is the relationship, yeah? that is the rishta. If Allah had put me, right, put me in that family, I will be begging there, I will be in that signal. I will not be sitting here. It is because of Allah's mercy, Allah has put me in a family, you know, where I was born to a parents who are reasonably well off. I am sitting here. Same is the case with you. He was born there, he was, you know, my parents had you know, expired. I, was, I would have been an orphan, right? Do we, do we think like that? Do you think the software engineer will think like that? He will say, hey, chal. Or maybe you'll take one two rupees and you'll put and that's it. Where is there no concern? There is not even an, an, an iota of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has given. Right? You see, right? Completely indifferent. He lives in his look at the rich guy and the politician guy. It is not about what the drama required. It is about what they thought they had to do. Did you get did you get that point? Look at the rich guy, how he spoke, right? Did you see the dress? It's all about him. What he thinks. He thinks, I wore a great dress. He thinks, you know, this is a Rolex watch. He thinks this is a Prada glass. The politician thinks there are so many sidekicks. The politician thinks, so you know, the, the beggar and the, the homeless guy and the uh, blind guy, they respected me. It's about what they think. The software engineer's life is also like that only. If he's like this, right? It's about what he thinks. He thinks career is important. He thinks, it's not going to bus. Punch bug. So, you know, there are some gymnastics you do, you somehow you pray, that's enough. Right? Ramazan me, uh, Quran holo, uh, without any understanding, you know, ek bar, ek martaba, do martaba, padho, kafi hai. It's about what he thinks. Are you able to relate to what I'm saying? Right? It's not about what, you know, uh, what is expected in the scene and all that, right? That's not this, you know, dur ki baat. This guy, you know, what about I, what, what do I think, yaar? This is how his life will look like. The point is, is my life like that? Mera zindagi oisa kya? Am I acting like this rich character and the politician character? Every day from the morning, you know, Fajr till now, I have entered into different scenes. I have played different roles. And inshallah, till I die, I will enter into different scenes and I will play different roles. Am I performing what is required in each scene? Am I performing what is required in each role that I am playing? Or am I like this rich character and the politician character who thinks because of this, it's good enough? Because I'm working here in the software engineer, I'm here, I'm, mashallah, I have this, I have this house, I have this, that, that is enough. Who cares? How is our life? Okay, this is a point of self-introspection. And if your life is like this, and where is it going to? It is, shows your understanding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole point here. Right? How have you understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you think Allah gave, you know, all this for I'm sitting here like this, the health that I, I'm able to talk. It's Allah's mercy, right? Why did he give me this? There are so many people who cannot talk. There are so many people who have got problem in throat today in the world. That you know, People are living. Today morning, so many people got up with a sore throat who cannot speak properly. Alhamdulillah, I am able to speak. Why? Why? Right? Alhamdulillah, my wife is cooking now. There are so many people who don't know what they are going to eat lunch because they don't have anything. Why? So, this is how I understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I don't think about it, then I have not understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Zuhar Salah, I, go, I mean, what are you doing there, man? You don't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did he give me this? Yeah? That's, a, that's the first question, right? The biryani is waiting after uh, come back from Zuhar. Or the, the, the no, tasty food is waiting. Zuhar Salah, that is the thing you should be thinking about. Why is Allah giving me this? What is he expecting from me? This is the relationship, right? Your complete understanding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to change. Why? Because that's how Allah, Rabbul Alamin himself wants you to understand. He is the one. So this is the negative part. Huh? The positive part. In this software engineer, 
exceptional software engineer okay and this guy is playing the role correctly he is like that you know homeless character and the blind character he is playing the role correctly what will his life look like again you can explain any one of you volunteers please how will his life look like this is a positive guy brothers how will his life look like despite his hmm. no sure that what what is going around you know he will have look on it and he will try to do his best and he will not you know even if his job demands uh, stops him that he might switch the job to other job yeah Yeah, fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Fear of poverty, but you will have fear of Allah. He will trust Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He will have that kind of sense that it's Allah who feeds me, who is the provider. So I should do my best. Nothing will stop him to do, you know, to do to do the things what Allah wants him to do. Yes, the fundamental point is every scene that he sees, right? It will be a moment of self introspection. Every scene, then not only about the society, even the house, we go through several scenes. the interaction with my spouse the interaction with my kids the interaction you know with my other family members the elders in my family everything is a scene and this guy every scene it will be a moment of self introspection either at that point in time or later but you will keep thinking about it oh did i do this correctly okay did i play this role correctly right these are the blessings that i am enjoying am i doing justice am i thanking allah subhanahu wa taala enough am i praising allah subhanahu wa taala enough am i doing what i am what allah rabbul alamin is expecting me to do the entire life is life of muhasaba the entire life is life of self introspection the entire life, if you become a man of self introspection what will be the biggest ibadat that you do <laughs> i want you to ask you know ask yourself if you are man of self introspection what will be the biggest ibadat that you will do there are several right whenever you find time you will do that ibadat what is that ibadat istighfar yes Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, it's like far. The moment you start in self-introspecting, you'll you'll feel that oh, yeah, I'm doing very less. It's like far. I'm asking for Allah's forgiveness very little. Now, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he said, right, I do it's like far seventy times. In another hadith, I do it's like far hundred times. We don't understand what it is. It is not the number. That is the moments of self-introspection. Allah Akbar, huh? the greatest teacher, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the moment. Why will you do it's like far? Chumma far. I feel bored. Astak far. Will you say? I think about it now. Nah, that is what people people do. Now nah, uh, they, they take one bead and they say "Astak for Allah, Astak for Allah." I mean, what Astak for Allah is this? You have to say "Astak for Allah" for a reason, right? You don't just say "Chuma." You don't learn to say "Astak for Allah." So "Astak for Allah" is a result of a self introspection. Hundred times he did it, which basically means hundred times he has self introspected moments. And this, our his "Astak for Allah" was not like our "Astak for Allah." You can, can you imagine the depth in his uh, "Astak for Allah"? Akbar. So imagine the depth in his self-introspection. This is the greatest teacher, man. He is our role model. So how many moments of self-introspection in my day I have? So this guy, this software engineer who is playing the role correctly, will have this because every role from the morning, at least I can think of several scenes where I faltered. Personally speaking, from the in the morning, from Fajr till today, including the class that I am taking, right? Several mistakes. I can right away I can think of. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive me. So in a day, how many roles we play and how many scenes and how many scenes we don't perform properly? You see. So what happens is it's not just about istighfar. The moment you do self introspection and do istighfar, the natural outcome is if the istighfar is significant and if it is sincere, it will bring a change in your life. You cannot continue like that, right? You know, you know, I will be indifferent and I also do istighfar. Then you are not doing istighfar, as one uh, Salaf said. Your istighfar needs an istighfar. <laughs> right? You need to seek forgiveness for the forgiveness that you are seeking. So, Allah, huh? it will become like that. So, if you're genuine and you know, you're sincere, right, your life will change. The question is, is my life like that? How many moments of self-introspection I have? When I stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in my salah, how do I understand Allah Subhanahu? Do I understand Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala like that? Right when I, you know, Salah, right? You obviously ask istighfar. I believe that everybody does, right? But but have you thought about it like this, right? So many roles, so many scenes. I'm so my performance such a flop, I'm pathetic performance. 
right? I mean, I'm only talking about myself. I know somebody here might say, mashallah, you know, I'm performing like you know, amazing. Mashallah, tabarakallah, good for you. And do dua for us also, or for me also, right? I'm talking about myself, right? Pathetic performance in majority of the roles, in majority of the scenes. scenes. Right. I mean, what is there to be? I mean, I don't know. Uh, how do I say Alhamdulillah standing there? And I mean, pathetic performance, right? Allah, Allah, Mustan, right? We seek Allah's help. So this is extremely important. So question is, is my life like that? Am I spending my life, my day in this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I spending my day, my life with moments of self-introspection where there are opportunities where I increase in asking his forgiveness, in asking his mercy, in asking his guidance. You see that? Completely different. Two different lives. These are two different people. They may have the same degree. They may earn the same salary. They may dress similar. They may have similar houses. They may live, uh, they may have a similar lifestyle. But no, completely different. Two different people. You are talking about two different people. So we all better know where we are. Right? I know where I am. Of these two characters, I know where I am. And you know where you are. Wherever you are, it is extremely important that you stop for a moment. You spend some time, think about it, and change. If it is the other guy, I definitely don't want to be there. Why? Because look at this. What is the fate of these two software engineers? If the software engineer is acting like the rich and the politician guy, what is he going to get? I told you, right? One of the two outcomes. Punishments. That too, how punishment? Shift punishment. But if the software engineer who played the role well, what does he get? He gets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and mercy. Look at this. This is how. Surely your Rabb is swift in punishment, but he's certainly all forgiving and most merciful. That's how Allah Rabbul Alameen ends that ayah. It started with him, it ended with him. It said, this is how I did. And not, not just that. Remember, this is what I am also. I'm swift in punishment, and I'm certainly all forgiving and most merciful. And what is this swift punishment? No, there'll be no delay in getting the punishment, right? You know, in, in the in, in our dunya, especially in India, they'll give a punishment. Sentence will be given. But the guy will not be punished for 20, 30 years. Right? The famous Sanjay Dutt example, right? And how many times he went, he came on Naujo Singh Sidhu. Uh, you know, some long time back, you know, he hit that guy and he died. And when did he go to jail? This is in this is our dunya, right? Uh, delay in punishment. There are no delay in punishment. As soon as the sentence is given, immediate punishment. May Allah SWT protect. And number two, the punishment will reach us fast. This is another understanding. We think, you know, oh, you know, no, long, okay, oh, day of judgment. Huh? No, day of judgment. The moment we die, the, the moment of death, the punishment will start. If you are a bad soul, may Allah protect. How will the angels take the soul? In a very rude manner. There itself it's starting, the punishment. And if you are a nice soul, alhamdulillah, you see? So it's not like, you know, it will take long time. No, it will reach us very fast. And we don't know when we will die. So it's, you know, it's something to be very, very concerned about. Forgiveness and mercy. And look at it. If you look at the Arabic, there is a more emphasis used in the ayat. Right? So I can, even if you don't know Arabic, it's okay. I'll keep it uh, simple for you. Allah, Rabbul I mean, how does he say? How does he end the ayat? How does he end the ayat? Wa innahu la ghafuru rahim. The previous one for the punishment, Inna Rabbaka Sari Ul Hisab. Sorry, Sari Ul Ikab. Inna, that is the emphasis in the previous one, right? And that's it. There is no other emphasis used. Inna Rabbaka Sari Ul Ikab. That's it. Here you look at it. Inna emphasis. La Gafuru Rahim. So double emphasis. So where what is Allah Rabbul Alameen emphasizing here? Allah Rabbul Alameen is emphasizing forgiveness and mercy. SubhanAllah. Look at how, what can I say? This is our Rabbul Alameen. So, yeah, he is swift in punishment, but that's not the emphasis. As believers, we should focus on Allah's Rabbul Alameen's forgiveness and mercy. And when Allah Rabbul Alameen mentions forgiveness, it also shows that Allah does not expect per perfection. Allah does not expect 100% performance in every scene. He knows that it is impossible. So, what is the point here? Am I making sincere efforts? That's why he said moments of self introspection. Right? Am I making efforts? Am I feeling bad that I'm not performing well? Am I trying to perform well? This is all the questions that I should ask myself. Nobody is expecting you to get 100 out of you. Go there and you know, you know perform in each and every scene, in each and every role. I mean, that's impossible. But that strong intention to perform well, the strong intention to be concerned about poor performance, 
the strong intention to ask for Allah's guidance and forgiveness should be there. And if it is done, then Allah Rabbul Alameen gives the forgiveness. And Allah says mercy. And mercy captures everything. Captures all the rewards that Allah gives. Right? From Jannah, uh, from everything. Right? All the honor. And you know, we discussed in Surah Waqiyah. All that is captured in mercy. Right? So the point here is, what price do you want? There are only two things. Either swift punishment or mercy one forgiveness. So what, what do you want? It's a dumb question. But what do you want? Mercy and forgiveness. Absolutely, right? Yes, sir. So the point is, what price will you get? This is what I want. Even the rich guy and the politician character, they wanted price. Sure. No problem. But did they get it? Will they get it? If you are the judge, will you give it? No. I want Allah's forgiveness and mercy. Great. But will I get it? Will you get it? That's the question. Today, if there is a takeaway that you're going to take away from this, two things. This is who Allah is, who created me in this temporary world for a temporary stint. And he elevated me in ranks to test me. Different scenes, different roles. What am I doing? How am I performing? I do this. Either I will meet Allah, who will, will be swift in punishment, or I will meet Allah, who is going to shower me with his forgiveness and with his mercy. So, what price will I get? The moment I am concerned about the price, and needless to say, I will definitely self-introspect on the performance that I am making in different roles and different scenes. And inshallah, inshallah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my life after this session should change, will change. Right? With this, we conclude this session.